Hello, Molly. So I know there's a few people that think um, I'm a bit certifiable, and you know what? I figured time to prove them right. Uh, New Year, spring's here, so I figured why not get myself piff code up by the CAA? And in plain English, that means getting my permission for commercial operations from the UK's Civil Aviation Authority. So in this video, sorry, thank you, Mulls. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why you might consider getting your PFCO and uh, how you go about it and uh, taking you along to the course that I'm doing uh, to show you what actually goes on on the uh, training and the assessment. So, first off, why would you even consider getting your PFCO? Well, I mentioned it does allow you to sell your services as a drone pilot and to actually get financial reward for flying, which is straightforward enough, but it's not actually about the money. Um, to be honest, the PFCO is nothing more than a license. So unless you've got a solid business plan or you're in a job that actually requires you to be flying, the PFCO isn't really gonna miraculously get you truckloads of money but it will ensure that you can fly right and safe. So many people undertake the training just for that reason. Either way, if you want to go ahead and uh, get your PFCO, then you do need to find a CAA approved remote pilot assessment organization. Um, they've actually got a list of current operators and whoever you go for needs to be on the list, which I'll put a link below. So this weekend, I'm heading over to Suffolk to get trained up by UAV8 Limited, who are based near Ipswich. They were highly recommended by a couple of my subscribers who went on their courses. They're mid-priced in the market with their two and a half day course costing around 700 pounds plus VAT. Now that sounds a lot of course, but uh, you are getting two full days of training plus the assessment as well. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how the weekend goes. So a final check of my gear and uh, possibly a little bit more practice of flying in a figure eight and uh, flying up to 400 feet without the uh, benefit of my display. Anyway, be an uh, interesting weekend. Let's see how we get on. So here I'm at the Novotel Ipswich, uh, ready to do the uh, two and a half day course with UAV8. Uh, no idea what the uh, day is going to entail, but um, anyway, we'll see how it goes on. So I've got that face track. Well, a bit of a long day has to be said. Um, started about 8.15 and finished at about quarter past six. I have to say, incredibly thorough. Um, first impressions of the day. Um, certainly, uh, UAV8 seemed an incredibly professional and uh, switched on crowd of guys, which is uh, very good. I'm very happy with the, uh, the choice there. Um, we did pretty much, uh, let's have a think, about an hour and a half on uh, different types of airspace and air, air classes, and another hour and a half or so on uh, aviation law, uh, especially with respect to uh, drones. Had a bit of a practical, had a bit of lunch, and then spent um, uh, the afternoon talking about the various GPS and uh, global positioning systems, and then an unfeasibly long time talking about weather, which I personally found very interesting, but was a bit surprised to um, see what level of detail they actually went into with uh, warm fronts, cold fronts, occluded fronts, uh, and how uh, conditions can change. I mean, I can all understand why we're talking about that, but I have to say an hour and a half to almost two hours on a uh, geography lesson was uh, was quite surprising. And another very good practical where we all had to work together. Very good because you've got your brain working and uh, making use of pretty much everything that you've been learning during the day. I have to say, a bit uh, brain smash now. Uh, I need to go down, have a pint, and... Um, God, Bit of an early start again tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, Sunday. Not very good. Right, day two. 
start off with a nice power breakfast anyway so um, yeah see if today is any uh, well it's not going to be any shorter than yesterday um, it's another 10 hours so I have just completed the two-day course which I have to say is surprisingly heavy going uh, most of the content is directly set by the Civil Aviation Authority the second day started just as early, uh, 8.15, and the whole morning was devoted to the principles and mechanics of how aircraft and drones in particular actually fly, and the components that go into drones and help keeping them stable. This was followed by an afternoon session on flight safety and the requirements for reporting when things go wrong, followed by an interesting session on how the human factor plays its part in causing and preventing accidents. And then finally, after a pretty brain-frying long day, you sit the 50-minute exam that's set by the CAA and which covers all the aspects of the previous two days' learning, with some surprisingly detailed questions. But the good news is, within an hour of sitting your exam, you get the results. With 96%. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Here I am with my certificate after passing the theoretical exam which is arguably the uh, hardest uh, part of gaining your overall certification for commercial operations. I have to say, I'm happy, but I'm also a bit frustrated, to be honest. Uh, passing the, the exam was a direct consequence of the uh, very thorough and professional training that uh, I've had over the last uh, two days. But the question I find myself, or found myself asking time and time again is, why am I being taught this? Do I really need to know the different air masses that hit the UK and their effect on weather? Do I need to know about anabatic versus catabatic winds or the causes of cloud and rain? Uh, why do I need to know the three different types of drag that affect aircraft or the principles of uh, lift and thrust? All this stuff was very interesting and was required teaching and was actually tested on the exam. But to me, it's like being forced to understand how the combustion engine in the carburetor works on your car, along with how to drive trucks and semi-trailers, when all you actually want to do is pass your car exam so you can just drive to work. Hopelessly overcomplicated with barely relevant components that are forced on you by the CAA, rather than focusing on practical and helpful advice and knowledge that would truly help most drone people uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Remember, many people on this course have their day jobs, which may be in filming or building or surveying, nothing to do with drones. Flying the drone is only a small and secondary part of their job. So to me, what's more important? How, learning how to fly your drone carefully and safely on a job, or learning how the polar maritime air mass can move down through mountain ranges causing cold and wet weather. Don't get me wrong, the whole two days were incredibly interesting. Everything on that curriculum does have some relevance to the safety of drone flights, but that's where it falls short. It's so focused on even the most remotely related elements of safety that it misses out far more useful or practical elements on actually flying your drone and carrying out a successful flight. Anyway, as said, this is the hardest part over and done with, so happy days today. Tomorrow I have to carry out my flight assessment, which is another key part of the certification process, proving that I can actually fly and control the drone in a safe and competent manner. Let's hope for some decent weather and no catabatic winds. Well, warm and sunny day, that's good, a slight breeze, but uh, good conditions for the uh, flight assessment, which we're doing on the, uh, on the football pitch. Just take off then when you're ready and go up to three metres. Okay, so that was the uh, flight assessment. Uh, it was a bit like uh, taking your driving test again. Um, I have to say though, uh, far more focused obviously on flying the drone itself and the control. Had to do uh, a manual figure of eight, uh, fly up to about uh, 400 feet uh, without the use of a screen and uh, then fly into the distance uh, until I was uh, comfortable that, uh, that that was the limit of my VLOS. Had to do another few manual procedures as well. Nothing really that you shouldn't be able to do as a competent uh, drone flyer anyway, so uh, no surprises. And uh, glad to say, obviously, I, uh, I passed. 
So that's, uh, that's the end of my training as such. Uh, two days of uh, in-class training, uh, followed by a 50 minute theory exam, and then uh, out on site, uh, doing a site assessment, and uh, going through a uh, 15 to 20 minute uh, flight assessment. That's not the entire process completed. Uh, now I have to go away and write again, in my humble opinion, a hopelessly over the top 25 to 30 page operations manual, uh, which I also have to include the certificates from, uh, that I've been uh, given on this weekend. That is then submitted to the CAA, uh, along with another fee, I can't remember if it's 150 or 200 pounds, and then um, they'll take uh, about 10 to 20 days to assess that and finally send me my PIFCO, uh, which will give me uh, the permission I need for commercial operations. So, um, what's my thoughts? on it. Well, as I outlined earlier, um, I think the CAA have massively overcomplicated what's needed for day-to-day -day operations. If I was doing specialist uh, drone flights in uh, difficult conditions, then by all means you have um, additional requirements and maybe additional training. As I said, people are doing their day jobs more and more and a drone is simply a small component of that. Yet to go through uh, two solid days of such difficult uh, and solid training and, uh, and then filling out a 25 page operations manual, which you have to keep up to date and submit every year with a fee in order to maintain it. Myself, I think that is uh, way beyond the requirements of your average occasional uh, drone user. If you're doing uh, commercial flying on a day-to-day -day basis in a multitude of difficult locations, then by all means, you need to be going through that level of training and more. Um, is it worth it? Should you do it? Well, I've learned a lot and um, I've enjoyed it. Uh, it's cost a fair bit of money. I'm not going to have any change from a thousand pounds. I doubt I'm going to get a thousand pounds worth of commercial work out of this. So um, yeah, I'm glad I've done it to prove to myself that uh, what I talk about on YouTube is correct. But um, if I didn't have my YouTube channel and uh, I wasn't really uh, in my normal nine to five day job, can't really see the point of, uh, of doing the PIFCO personally. But um, if you are in a position where you're being asked to do uh, drone work, aerial work as part of your job, then you haven't got a choice. You absolutely have to uh, go on this and, uh, and, and get registered. So um, it's not impossible at all. Uh, thankfully, everybody on my course passed. And, uh, but uh, like I said, it's a, a pretty heavy duty weekend. And uh, there's a lot of theory that you think, am I ever really gonna use that? But um, it's good to know, and um, yeah, there we are, now I know it. Anyway, uh, still doing a little bit of uh, buzzing around. I've got uh, Phantom 4 buzzing around behind me. Hopefully this has been very useful to uh, anybody considering doing their PIFCO. Um, if you've got to do it through your job, then great, now you know what's involved. If you're just a hobbyist wondering whether or not it's for you, well, that's a decision you can make, but at least now you know what's involved and how much it's gonna cost. Uh, as ever, if you like these sorts of videos, hit that little subscribe button. Until next time, have fun, happy flying. Cheers.